Rhode Island Comic Con. The voices of Batman, starring Kevin Conroy and Will Friedle, hosted by David Chitarella. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. I'm Will. <laughs> You're more than that, Will. Come on. I'm Will Friedle. Yeah, there we go. The full name now. <laughs> so here we are, the Voices of Batman panel. Are you guys excited or what? Come on, let's hear it for them. Awesome. So uh, let's just uh, have people line up for uh, questions. When did we start doing... Uh... Oh, that maybe, um... 96, 96? 95, 96? I was, I think, 21 when I met you. That's when I first met you. Yeah, 21 years old. I was 22. <laughs> Terrifying, yeah. <laughs> you were. Why I'm are you laughing? <laughs> well, was it your, I'm curious, was it your first animated uh, role? It was my first animated anything. I had never done any animation whatsoever. Um, and I walked in and they said, uh, here's Kevin Conroy. And I went, oh God. <laughs> It's like, because you were, ba I mean, you know, I was the perfect age, so I grew up watching Batman the Animated Series. And, yeah, obviously. So, you know, just meeting you is kind of like, hello. It's like, oh my God, it's Batman, just said hi to me, yeah. And you, uh, especially that first episode, the thing I remember more than anything, other than being terrified, was you completely taking me under your wing with little things, where it was like, you know what? Okay, I can tell you've never done this before. Sit up straight. <laughs> like, roll your shoulders back. It was just something, I, my thing was, because I was only on camera, I would do this, so the microphone was in front of me, and he'd say a line, and i go, but you can't possibly do that. He would act with me. And it's like, no, 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 into the microphone. Like, oh, sorry, okay, so, yes, let's, we gotta do, do no, 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 no. <laughs> so I just, I do, I remember you kind of, all right, it's cool, chill out, un, you know, Roll the shoulders back, and it was very, very helpful, yeah. And meeting Will for the first time, well, actually, it was, it was my first animated show, too. That's an interesting thing about Andrea Romano. Uh, She's a wonderful casting person, and she goes for actors. Incredible. She's the best. And she likes to cast really good actors. And um, so she, she looks outside the pool of people who only do voice work or who only do animation work, and she gets a lot of... of, of People who are new to it. It was the first animated role I ever auditioned for. It was Batman, for Batman the Animated Series. And it was just an actor using his imagination to come up with the right choice for the voice. And as you heard with Will, it was the first animated role he did too. Yeah. Um, and then they become these iconic roles, really because it's, it's a reflection of how good Andrea is in matching actors with characters. Yeah. Uh, because acting is all about what you bring. You know, they say in acting, you are your instrument. It's so true. It's everything you've lived for the 20 years before he walked into that audition. It's every, every experience he's had. It's every emotion he's had. It's every relationship he's had. It's how it affects him. And, and then you hear that in the timber of his voice. And that came off in the timber of the character. And that was it for me with Batman, too. It's, it's everything you've been through for those 30 or 40 years, whatever it is, before you walk in there. And, and how you, the choices you make, uh, how life affects you, that's what makes you literally a performing artist. That's what makes acting so unique among the arts. Now, did you know the second you hit the voice the first time, did you go, that's it? Like, I know, that's it. That's Batman. Well, they, they said, what, what do you know about Batman? I said, well, I know the Adam West series. They went, no, 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 no. That's not what, that's not what we're doing. Bruce Tim went crazy. He's like, no, no, no. He said, no, it's noir. It's dark. It's, he's lost his parents as a child. He, he lives in the, the shadows. He, he's avenging their deaths. And I said, my God, you're telling the Hamlet story. This is like classic Shakespeare. He said, yeah, go with that. Go with that. So I just used my imagination. And... I, I put myself into the darkest, uh, saddest, kind of intimate place I could find to come up with this voice. And, and when I did it, I looked in the recording studio and everyone stopped. And then Bruce and Paul and Andre all started running around. And I thought, well, I've either done something really good or really bad. <laughs> really, really bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it is nuts, because you do. You have that iconic kind of voice. You, but you also, you can hear you laugh or anything from five rooms away. 
It's the greatest thing. You'll be sitting there doing something, and then you'll hear from again. You hear the laugh or the and it's like Kevin's here. He's, <laughs> he's right down there. I can tell. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's a big voice. There's there difference. <laughs> But, but a lot of it is about the casting and, and how. And, and also along that line, a unique to Warner Brothers is they like to get all the actors in the studio together. Mm. I don't know if all of you realize this, but the actors go first. The recording is done first. So it's, a, it's recorded like a radio play. So you have a lot of input into how the character is going to be um, heard and rendered because the recordings are then sent off to the artist to be painted. So you have the first input sort of in the rendering. And then they come back from the artists and you do a process called ADR, where they sync up the visual with the soundtrack. But there are extra mouth flaps and lines have to be rewritten and stuff. Fight scenes. Fight stuff scenes. Like that, yeah. And then you, you sync it all up in ADR. But the, the voice actors have the first input in terms of the, 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 the rendering of the story. And Warner Brothers uniquely likes to get everyone in the room together. So the booking sessions are phenomenal. You get six or eight wonderful actors acting like children in there. Yeah. You know? Uh, especially if you have someone like Mark Hamill in the uh, room, who's just like crazy. Nuts. Nuts. And yeah. he's bouncing off the wall. And the better Mark is, the better I am, yeah, the all better of us Will are. is. Yeah. The better the other actors are around you, yeah. the better they make you. Because yeah. you're reacting to them, and they're bringing out better qualities in you. And so Andrea loves to cast really, really interesting good actors because she knows we'll bring out the best in each other. Well, that was the thing about Return of the Joker was I was sitting there like this and you were here and Mark was here. And I spent a week going... <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. But yeah, no, to, I mean, what you were saying about Andrea, the other thing that was so great about her because she does cast out of the box and all that kind of stuff, you never knew who was gonna be in the room when you walked in. Yeah. And you would walk into some of the coolest actors. It's like you'd walk in and, and I, I mean, it, it, Michael Gross is there one day and Robert Patrick's there one day and you never, you know, it, it was incredible. So you'd walk in kind of wide-eyed going, I wonder who I get to sit next to I this know. time. It was just, you know, John Ritter, I got to work with John. It was just, it was so cool and you never knew who was gonna be there. It was I know. Yeah, it was awesome. Ron Perlman is Clayface. Oh yeah, and awesome. It was amazing, the cast was amazing. Totally cool, yeah. So, uh, should we have some questions? Hi, um, just want to say, huge fan of both shows and the entire DCAU as a whole. Um, I guess that's my sucking up moment, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Suck up louder. So you can do it louder and longer. <laughs> Absolutely. More, more. Um, and I know, uh, I, I honestly have to say that I think the show means more to me now at you know, almost 30 than it did when I was you know, five or six and 12, respectively just because of, I know that a lot of it is, you know, the writing, but certainly your performances drove it home and, and just made it stick. And there's just, it's so, such a deep show that treated, treated us kids like adults back then. And well, now, you know, a lot of people may not realize that Batman the Animated Series was originally a prime time show. I, I remember When it was that. on Fox, it was prime time. So they were not gearing towards kids. Right. They, were, they were, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini were going to render this great yeah. mythological story yeah. as passionately and truthfully as they could. Uh, they weren't thinking about making a kid's show. Um, so that, 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 that relates to what you're saying. It's why it's translated for so long. Well, and I, I also think that's one of the reasons why we, that was a problem with Beyond, was that I remember they finished Batman the Animated Series, and I, Bruce was telling me this, he said, they specifically came to us and said, we want to do a kind of a kid-friendly, right. Batman, and we want to make the, the, the main hero of the show, the new Batman, we want to make him, you know, 17, and we're going to appeal to kids, and they said, Bruce went, okay, and then went out and made the pilot of Batman Beyond, and he said, I sat there and I watched the opening, we, we said, we're with a bunch of Warner Brothers executives, we sat down, the thing started, the opening title sequence comes on, Batman is, is beating everybody up, then he grabs the gun, that great scene, he has the heart attack, and he said, I watched half of the Warner Brothers executives stand up and walk out of the room. <laughs> He said, because I knew they went, this is not the teen show that we wanted to make the teen show. And then it became Batman Beyond. So it was one yeah. of those things where they, they said, yeah, Bat it was really dark, so we want to make it a little lighter. And then Batman Beyond, of course, wasn't lighter at all. Not at all. And, uh, and he said, I watched as half the room got up and left. So <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Um, uh, my actual question was, um, 
One of the biggest, obviously, uh, one of the, I think the greatest moments, or well, not moments, but overarching stories in Batman Beyond is the relationship between uh, Bruce as Batman and Terry as Batman, which also goes into the Justice League episode epilogue. Um, there's a one of the largest parts of it is Terry trying to fill Batman's shoes while still remain his own person. Um, how, if at all, did that carry over into reality while you were actually making the show? And Will and Kevin both providing their voices for the respective characters. M meaning, did I look up to him as a mentor the way? Because did, yeah. yeah, did you ever feel like <laughs> how? Did you ever feel like how am I going to fill these shoes? Well, and first of all, I, I think in a, in a very certain and strange way, I'm really lucky in the world of Batman in that I was never Bruce. And I think so there's, you don't, it, it wasn't really having shoes to fill it because no one had ever been Terry before. I mean, the worst thing I could do is they go, you know what, you, you're the worst Terry I've ever heard. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because I'm the only Terry you've ever, so no, it was, <laughs> it was, it was easier for me in that regard where I never had to step into the shoes of Bruce Wayne. Um, in, as for actors walking in and seeing Kevin, who is Kevin, um, a classically trained Shakespearean actor with this deep booming voice who already had been the character for five, six, seven years by the time, it was ridiculous to even attempt to try to fill the shoes. So it was kind of, like I said, in my opinion, I've said this before, I think I've said this to you, I've had, in my professional career, I've had two real mentors. Um, on camera, it was William Daniels who played Mr. Feeney, who took me under his wing right away. And for vo my entire voiceover career, it was Kevin who took me under his oh, wing right that's away. Nice of you to say. So it was that kind of thing where it was, I mean, talk about trying to fill shoes. It was impossible. So it was just learn as much as he'll teach and keep your mouth shut. That's pretty much what, which is difficult when you're trying to record something to keep your mouth shut, by the way. When I first met Bruce and Paul, um, they, they were distinguishing Batman from the Adam West show. But then there was always that sort of in the back of my mind. And the first time I met Adam was, uh, when he came on as the gray ghost. And there was that moment of, you know, ooh, Batman meets Batman, you know? And I felt like, you know, am I stepping on his toes? That kind of thing. So there's always that kind of actor thing of, you know, am I, am I on someone else's territory now, you know? But he couldn't have been more gracious. He said, you have fun with it the way I had fun with it, you know, just go with it. Um, different actors bring different qualities to everything. I thought, um, early in the Batman shows, the first Joker was, a lot of people don't realize, was Tim Curry. Mm -hmm. He recorded the character for about six episodes. His Joker was dark and scary and terrifying, like lock up the kids. <laughs> and they wanted Mark, who was dark and scary and hysterical. Yeah. It was just a different kind of way of doing Joker. And when I heard... Mark, I thought, wow. When, the, when they told me they were replacing Tim, I thought, why? He's incredible. But then I heard Mark, and I thought, oh, I see. They wanted, they wanted a more of a comedic character. And then I, I thought, no one will ever be as good as, as Mark. And then I th saw Heath Ledger, and I thought, wow, this is a whole different take on the Joker. It's just as good as Mark, but it's, it's another crazy direction. You know what I mean? So there's, there's different actors just bring different things to the same character, the same genre. We were playing different roles. But we're both in the sort of, in, in each of our respective s series, we were the, the lead, sort of. We were the, he was the lead in Batman Beyond, I was the lead in Batman the Animated Series. Um, but you bring your own quality to those characters. Does that make sense? I guess he's, he's satisfied. He's like, okay, okay. Yep, I'm good. How do I shut him? He's thinking, how do I shut this guy up? He's like, I got it. Well, first, first, I just want to thank you both for coming to our convention. I hope you have a good time. We're having a great this time. This is great. Good Everybody's kidding, yeah. been great. Um, you All these Boston accents, it's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I feel like I'm home. I love it. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> what was your, each of you, what was your first exposure to Batman? You kind of touched on it earlier with the 66 uh, series, but um, when, when did you first get exposed to the character? Well, my first exposure was the Adam West show. Uh, I didn't even know, I didn't read the comic books until after I got the job and then had to kind of freshen up on The Dark Knight, you know, what the legacy was, and learn about it. And then I realized what they were going back to. Um, so my 
first exposure was that pop Zam pow, you know, really campy 60s. Zam. What's yeah. a Zam? I know. Sure. What about you? Uh, my first real exposure was you. Oh. Was it nice? It was. It well, was. when you start with the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's true. Uh, no. It's but it's true. I mean, it's true. It's one of those things where is, is you know it was. I, I look back at the Batman of my childhood, and it's it's you and Michael Keaton, were the were the Batman of my childhood. I mean, that's how. I, I remember talking to Bruce Tim one time, and Bruce said something to me that always made so much sense. He said, whenever the Batman films got really dark, the cartoons and the animated series got really light. Whenever the films got light, like the Schwarzenegger Batman and all that stuff, <laughs> the series got darker. And he said the reason for that is there's always should be a Batman for everybody. Hmm. And I thought that was a cool way to look at it, where it was like, no, the kids can have this, the adults have this, sometimes it switches, the adults have this, and the kids have this, but there's always a Batman for everybody. So yeah, it was, it was Michael Keaton and you were, were really the, the, hmm. my, my Batman. And along that line, there's always, all, all the different takes on Batman are valid. Uh, a lot of people don't take the 60s Adam West series as seriously because it was so campy. But get Kevin Smith on that topic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he loves that show. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's kind of like pop culture. Yeah. It's almost like a Warhol take on Batman. Yeah. And the cast, incredible. if you look back on who was in that show, the actors, yeah. they were incredible actors in that show. Yeah. yeah. And they kind of tried to do a little bit with, a, with when we were doing Brave and the Bold. And that's the same kind of thing as Brave and the Bold had that campy kind of 60s vibe. Yeah. It was great. That worked really well. Was, yeah. Incredible. Thanks, guys. Sure. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hey. Um, if you can recall, um, what was your first impression when you heard Richard Mall go from Harvey Dent to Two-Face? I loved w working with Richard Mall, and um, it's so interesting. Some actors, like Mark, is like this. When they transform from one voice to the other, they, they physicalize it. Um, Mark, when he becomes the Joker, you want to stay out of his way. He devours the microphone. He's, like, he's yeah! and so close you know, he to it. Like he's going to eat the microphone. Yeah, he does. Whole it's incredible. Voice becomes like rubber. It's incredible. And Richard Mall sort of did that too. When he got the darker part of um, Two Face. It got, he got scary looking. He got scary looking. He's a really interesting actor. Um, they had a great, Andrea brought in great oh, actors. Incredible. On this show. And there's also, there's a, a freedom unlike any other form of acting with voice acting. Absolutely. Where it is just you and the microphone. There, it, you're not worrying about how you look, makeup you're wearing, and where you're standing. It's just pure acting. There's nothing like it. And there's something intimate about oh, being in that booth. Oh, it's incredible. You know you're I mean? just, yeah, you can see Mark. He's, he's an inch from the microphone. Yeah. I mean, look, oh, it's, it's amazing. It's a wonderful form of acting. It really is. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Robin, I've been looking for you all day. Did you like it when you were just Batman or when it was Batman and Robin? Ooh. That's a loaded question Ooh. from Robin. Ooh. I'm telling you, loaded question. Is there an actor asking that question? <laughs> um... The interesting thing about being just Batman in the original show, Batman the Animated Series, is that it got to be really about the psychodrama of Bruce Wayne and Batman. And like in Mask of the Phantasm, oh, and great movie. Perchance to Dream, oh. and Dreamscape, there were all these fascinating sort of psychological uh, stories where this man was struggling with himself which I think the audience really relates to. And that's the essence of the character, really. When Robin came on, it enabled the writers to open up the stories more, gave them a new character for Batman to interact with. But it made it less about Batman's internal life. Does that make sense? And so there were more stories to explore, but it was less interesting for me as an actor. Hmm. Was it the network that wanted uh, Robin? You know what, it's usually, it's usually the writers, Bruce, Tim, and Paul Dini. Um, they, they're very self-demanding. Um, 
they, they, they demand the best of others and they demand the best of themselves. Yeah. Bruce, Tim, when he puts a comma, he wants to hear the comma. You know, if he wants the line written the way it was written. Yep. And you respect it. Yep. Um, because he's kind of like a genius. Yeah. But, he when really he runs, but when he runs out of ideas, um, he doesn't like to um, bull yeah. his way through, you know what I mean? Yeah. He won't just create nothing out of air. So he, the reason he stopped doing the animated series wasn't because the audience didn't want more or their network didn't want more. It was a very high rated show. It was because he just couldn't come up with more ideas. So then they went on to Batman and Robin because that gave them another venue to explore. And then they went on to Batman Beyond yeah. because they told me, we've just run out of story ideas for you. Yeah. Um, we've got to come up with something new. They thought for a while about putting Batman in the future. Um, they were just trying to put a different yeah. takes on the character to come up with story ideas. And this mentor idea of coming up with a new young person doing it was a great idea. I thought so too. Because it was also, it, I, I think the relationship between Batman and several of the Robins is very father-son. Oh, yeah. And I think for Terry, it was almost, there was, it was a different relationship in a way for me than it was a father-son than a Batman and Robin because Batman was now sitting on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. So it was almost, it was like, instead of just, uh, you're my son and I'm, I'm taking care of you, it was now, well, thanks, Dad, but the company's mine now. Yeah. But so also, I you can retire you. to Florida, and I'm going to take care of what you built. And I think there's <laughs> a weird kind of dynamic between the two that they got yeah. to play. There was one episode, unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it, so if somebody knows it, shout it out. But where Talia comes back. Out and of the past. Out of the past, out of the past thank you. And, and it's the, <laughs> I love that. Up here, so. And it's the first time where now Bruce is younger, so Bruce and Terry get to fight side by side together. Right. That was, I thought, just the coolest. Because it was the first time as an actor that I was sitting next to you where you went straight Batman, the animated voice. There was no gravel to it. Mm -hmm. So it was, to me as a kid, it was like, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting with Batman today. Like, can't wait. Yeah, it was awesome. That was really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> thank you. My question was literally about Out of the Past and how you felt when he did the old voice. So my, my backup question... I answered question, your question. You waited in line the whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's well, the worst. Hey, it was awesome listening to you as um, old Bruce Wayne, young Bruce Wayne, then also kind of did the middle piece there, what he just said. And then when you did older Terry, when they look back at the very, very... Oh, when they did epilogue, and that, that had some of the gravel. Also yeah. awesome. So then yeah. my backup question... Um, how do you kind of differentiate when you do video games? Because you've said how they bring everyone together kind of for the regular show. I can't imagine they do that at the games. Maybe they do, but kind of how's it different? How do you approach it? It couldn't be more different. It's amazing. In, in doing the regular shows, you have all these actors to work off of and to feed you. And it's a wonderful, it's a, really a kind of a joyous experience. Everyone looks forward to it. When you build a game, Ugh. like... Um, <laughs> Arkham Knight, the one that just came out, took two years to build, people don't realize. And there are 36,000 lines of dialogue in it. It's massive. And you go into a booth, and because of the way games are constructed, they can't do them in, in, with people in the booth together. You, you, they need completely clean takes on everything. And they need four or five or six takes of each line and four or five or six readings of each take. Well, because it's a video game, you it's press a video one game. button, you yeah. go one way and the whole story Depending happens. Depending on how the way. thing it's is played, it goes in a million different directions. Crazy. So they need millions of variations. Yeah. And they need just you. So you're in the booth alone at four hour blocks of time. With a script this thick. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And then you get an hour for lunch and then is a four hour afternoon session. Yeah. So that's eight hours a day alone. And you've got to keep the character believable, yeah. stay in the voice, keep him fresh, yeah. don't let it get dead, and act on top of that, uh, alone in a vacuum. Yeah. And those booths are like dead air because all it's- All day. All day. Yeah. And it's day after day after day. So there's really no fun in yeah. building those games at all. It's hard, hard work. Yeah. Uh, but the fun is watching the results yeah. because they're so incredible. I've also noticed, I don't know about you, but video games far more than animation just shred your voice. Oh, I mean, you well, walk it's out. It's only you for eight, eight hours. Eight hours. You walk out a good octave lower than oh, when yeah. you walked in. It's unbelievable. You walk out going, oh, I can't believe all day long. You're just because okay. Now there's explosions in the scene, so you got to yell this whole scene fifteen times, and it's just it's you shreds you. It really does. Yeah. So that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Hi. Um, when you guys were uh, recording Batman uh, Beyond and you were talking about how you were all in the same room, did you record your lines in serial like you would go and then you would go? Or did oh, you yeah. have a no, dialogue it's done like, back and forth? It's done like a play mm -hmm. where you're okay. back and forth and back and forth. And Andrea was great with that, where we'd do large chunks of it. So yeah. if you and I had a scene together, yeah. it would be, all right, we're going from line 38 all the way to line 78. It's five pages long. Spread them out on your, your, your easels and let's go. And then you'd sit there and we'd read them straight through. So you'd get to act it through to get the, the sort of force of the scene and the, and the tempo of the scene and the ups and downs and the, the rhythms of the scene. And then they'd go back and break it up and say, okay, now this we need cleaner, that we need cleaner, this we need cleaner. Yeah. So they do both, really. Okay, and when you were playing off each other with that, is that um, a lot more helpful than, say, you're recording for the video game and you're all alone? And oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Especially, always better to play off of somebody. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. Actors are people. Mm -hmm. People forget that. And there are... Well, there are. There are. <laughs> there are good people and there are bad <laughs> people. Good. There are generous people <laughs> and there are selfish people. Yeah, it's very true. It's just like people. Yeah. And the actors you want to work with are the generous, good people. Yeah. Because they give you, they give you so much energy. Yeah. And they love working with you. But there are some who are just selfish and are no fun to work with. And really no fun to work with. And that just yeah. happens sometimes. And, and it's so, you know, I then would you say find this, out you're on your own. Yeah. yeah. I would say this, though, especially in the voiceover side, that's more rare than on camera. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah. The, the people, the voiceover community, we're not a huge community, and 99.9% .9 are the nicest, most generous people you'll ever meet. And when someone does come in who's kind of a dick, you, you just... <laughs> it's jarring. Well, you see Andrea just go, this ain't happening Yeah, no, again. it's you know? jarring. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is weird. You'll get the entire room kind of going like, what, who invited this dude? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's no, weird. I've had Andrea, actually, I don't know if you've had this happen, she'll go, okay, thank you, everyone, you know, after the procession. That was great, 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 everyone was great. Kevin, could you wait for just a minute? <laughs> could you stay for a second? <laughs> and so everyone leaves, and she comes up, and she goes, what's your schedule like this afternoon? And I'll go, well, nothing, I'm okay. She says, good, because we're bringing another actor in yep. to read for who that dick didn't do, <laughs> yeah. you know? And yep. will you do the reading with them? Yeah. She is, I, I mean, again, not to harp on Andrea, but man, can she direct. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she is the best of the best. She's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Thank so, you both yeah. for being Batman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my question has a little bit of backstory to it. Um, long story short, for me, I was a kid who was really sick growing up. I was so sick to the point I lost my eyesight. Wow. So um, way back then, when your shows were both, I don't know if it was on the hub or it was on TV, I had no visual of anything that was going on. I only had your voices. Wow. So it's really <laughs> emotional wow. for me to think to talk to you guys right now. Um, and I guess that to go along with my question, like now I've seen the shows obviously and I'm seeing you and that has touched me in such an incredible way. Do you, just like the general public, not just me, do you ever think that your voices and you guys would just touch the world and have such an impact on this kind of population of people that it has? Wow. Wow. That's, That's amazing. wonderful. That's a wonderful story. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And congratulations yeah, for coming that's through awesome. that. Coming through that. God, that's awesome. I think when you're creating shows like this, you never really, you don't have a perspective no. on how iconic they will become. Because you don't even know if the next season's going to be bought. Yeah. You know, they do an order for 10 episodes. You don't even know if it's going to be 10 more, much less 20 years more. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so you don't really, I don't think you really realize the impact you're going to have um, until much later and you look back in hindsight. Yeah. Then you see it. I'm like Mark, I'm sure, never anticipated that he would become this iconic, insane voice. Yeah. Um, that happens in hindsight. Yeah, you don't, he's right. You just, you don't, you don't know. So then when you, somebody comes and you hear it, it's kind of like, oh my God, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, people come up to me at cons and go, hey, listen to me, I'm gonna do you. And then they do me and I go, okay, now I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Did nice. you think I'd be happy hearing this? <laughs> That's incredible, though. Un well, like, unbelievable. Yeah, it's a great story. Well, Congratulations. Well, I guess with all that being said, are you proud of the work that you did looking back in hindsight? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, Hugely. Yeah. Honored and, yeah. We're all proud of incredible. it. Incredible. My God, to yeah. be associated with something like this? Yeah. It's like working on the Statue of Liberty. I mean, it's just... It's, <laughs> it really well, it's is. Sort of it's, like something, a, it's a cultural icon. It is. It's, it's building something that is absolutely going to last. And especially in this day and age of instant everything, yeah. building something that's going to last is becoming more and more rare. Yeah. So it's 
yeah, I'm honored every every time somebody comes up and says, "I love, I loved Batman Beyond." And also, it would be so hard for us to get into doing what we're doing now yeah. today, yeah. because they're all film stars are doing these roles now. For yeah, I mean, they they cast now, believe it or not, not based on who's best for the role. Oh no, they cast on who has the biggest Twitter and Facebook following. Yep, because that's an automatic million people yep. who will tweet in. That, isn't that amazing? That's terrible because um, I can never imagine anybody but you two playing those roles. Well, <laughs> I you. agree with Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Been a big fan uh, of the shows you did the voices for, and I've watched uh, all of Batman the Anime series, Batman and Robin, and want to thank you all both for being a big part of my childhood. Well, I really you. enjoyed the cartoons. Thank Great. you very Thanks much. So it's very much. sweet of you to say that. Good, good to talk to you. Oh, I, but now I have a question. Okay. I kind of wish that something on Superman the Anime series would have been, been different. What I would have wished them different, it, I didn't like the episode called uh, Legacy when uh, Superman uh, was brainwashed and attacked Earth, and now he's lost uh, all the t oh. trust of yeah, the yeah, people yeah. Earth, and now his life was never the same, and I really hate, hated yeah. seeing that. He was a great guy. Well, we'll have to tell Tim Daly that you did not like that. You didn't, no. <laughs> I remember that one. It's when he had to, he had to uh, fight Supergirl. Yeah. He fights Supergirl yeah. and knocks her out, and then he wakes up and has to bring her to Star Labs. I can't even talk about it. It's a tough episode. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you. your question. Thank, Thank you for your question. That when Superman came back on Batman Beyond, uh -huh. what they didn't like was he was brainwashed again. So they, they yeah, because he had Superman. start when he comes back in, in an episode called The Call, which yeah. was which was the I think the last two we actually recorded together. Um, that was it turned out to be their template for the Justice League series because they weren't sure Bruce and Paul weren't sure they were going to be able to hold the series with six or seven different characters. So it was really their 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 te uh, their template for it was a two part episode called The Call where Terry is brought into the Justice League into the future Justice League, um, and that is one thing that he he didn't like was that Starro jumped on Superman mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he's been brainwashed for years. So he did, and then he and I had, I said no I think. I didn't think, and we went back and forth, and it turns out that, of course, I was right. I have a, a weird memory when it comes to they, these they things. They had Will with the checkbox. I had the like, checkbox. I got it right, and, and yeah, Bruce got it wrong, which is which is very odd. He still he still tells me about that to this day. Remember that time you got it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wait till you see what happens to Terry in the future. Like, wait, what? Yeah. Uh. So. <laughs> oh, who's, who do we have here? Who do we have oh, here? Who's here? Hello. 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 You look As familiar. you can tell, I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> Um, and as everyone here knows, Star Wars is not far away. And, well, it's uh, actually, it's from a land very far, far away. Far, from. far away. Yeah. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> um, I, was, I have a very short scene from The Empire Strikes Back with me that I was hoping Bruce and Terry could fill the roles of Vader and Luke for. It's <laughs> you. Of who? <laughs> what? Yeah. Why is everyone looking at me? Because <laughs> we're sitting in the front. We're <laughs> it's Batman's uh, decision. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. oh, I don't feel on the spot. No, I don't feel put on the spot. Is it? Oh, it's the same thing? Yeah. Oh, is it the same? No, they gave you a different scene. I was wondering if we had the separate <laughs> separate. You're going to be Princess Leia. Okay. You're not, you're really now, should we do these as, as Terry, or am I doing a Mark Hamilton? Am I going to Tashi Station to pick up power converters? Which one are we doing? <laughs> as Terry and Bruce. OK, go ahead. Luke, you do not yet realize your importance. You have only begun to discover your power. Join me, and I will complete your training. With our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. I'll never join you. <laughs> if you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. No, that's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. Search yourself, Luke. You know it to be true. No. No! 
Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was cool. And yet, and yet it's true. <laughs> father and son, Terry and Bruce, father and son. It, it actually works. It, it works. <laughs> it works. That was cool. Yeah. Was I was like, I was like, I'm kind of creeped out by this, but then I'm like, it works. Yeah, that was there cool. is a <laughs> there is a son of uh, Bruce actually. Oh man! And if they, they Kevin dad, Conroy you know. saying, "I am your father." <laughs> it's bad enough, but my dad is actually right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. Hello. All right. First of all, first things first of all, of course I love the DCAU, but I just have a question about Dwayne McDuffie and Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, obviously they passed away not too long ago, but do you feel like Dwayne McDuffie took a very significant, like, well, took a different, like, tonal shift to Unlimited compared to Unlimited? Take the Cadmus arc, for example, because it seems like it's, like, very political in terms of its, you know, Cadmus having, like, the Terrence or whatever. Like, it seems like it's very... Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. It was, Dwayne was one of those guys. There was a group of them. It was, it was Glenn Murakami and Paul Dini and Alan Burnett, Bruce Timm, Dwayne McDuffie. They were, they were one of those, he was one of those guys. There was the gang that were the encyclopedias that knew everything, every angle. You know, it's, every comic book, every, ser every series, every superhero, they come from a thousand angles. And that's what makes them so brilliant. Yeah. It's the idea that I can go and I can read Superman, and then I can go and I can read Superman Red Sun, and now I get to see what happens if Superman landed in Russia. So it's just, you, there's no end to the genius of what the, the mythology and, uh, of, of, of superheroes can do. And I think Dwayne, I don't think there was any, I, I mean, I, don't, I certainly don't want to speak for the man, um, rest him, but uh, I don't think that he would go in saying, I'm going to make it more political, I'm going to do this. I think these were guys that were, would sit down and go, you know what would be cool? Is if this happened? Yeah, and then they it was much more that, it that world, and they talk about it. This and would then be they would really go from cool. There. Yeah, if this yeah. happened, this would be awesome. What a what a what a shock that oh, was! Oh man, yeah. no awful. one knew that was coming. Nope, and he was so respected and oh. so loved yeah. and vibrant and, and still such a talented was, and vibrant guy. I mean, yeah. it's, it was so shocking. It was horrible. It was like it really the was. ugly real world, yeah. you know, came into our fantasy world. It was, yeah, it was bad, but there. The, the wonderful thing about the shop that they created at Warner Brothers is the talented people that they have there. Um, and he was a great example of that. He was, yeah. yeah. You're right, though, especially back in the day when we were doing Beyond and, and Justice League and everything else, it was talent from beginning to end. Oh, yeah. Every single Everybody. little aspect, the, every artist, every casting director, every director, there wasn't a person that you'd go, not really holding up their end. I mean, no, everybody no. was, I yeah, was incredible. Right, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That was a very good question about Dwayne. Wow, you're looking directly at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the you're looking at us, so it's only at yeah. you. You're looking at us, so it's only fair. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask, um, what's the relationship like between all of the different actors who have portrayed Batman? Well, I, I they all you. look up to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. No. It's true. I'm kidding. It's I'm true. kidding. I'm it's kidding. True. No, but it's Don't true. Don't record that. I'm it's kidding. true. <laughs> it's true. Um, I will guarantee no. you as I sit here. Are you here, kidding? I will guarantee you as I sit here, there's not a person that has put on the voice mantle of Batman and not said, I will do my damnedest to come as close to Kevin Conroy as I can and I know I'll fail. No, not no. one. No, 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 not one. And there, and there are some, and as you were saying before, everybody has their own take. There are different people doing different things. Yeah. You look at Dietrich Bader, you know, on Batman Brave and Bold compared to well, your Batman. They're, they're, <laughs> nice, nice. No, no I love Dietrich, he's a great different. guy. They're completely different. They're completely different. Yeah, everybody's just different. It was, it was different, but there, yeah, you, everybody's trying to, we're playing for a second. Nah, All right, thank nah, you. Nah. Before the uh, next question, I should have brought these out earlier. Here's. Uh... This is me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. There you go. See, my older brother would build them for me. There we go. Oh, nice. Cool. And that's me. Yeah. Sweet. I've had these since like the 90s. And, yeah. Have you ripped my oh, wings really? fell off? Yeah, oh, yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> I have one wing just flying in a circle around Gotham going. You're too busy. Help! Bruce, Help! I can't turn right. What my do I do? The, the suit's broken. I can't turn right. 
Yeah. You never saw that episode, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say it's a huge honor okay. to be in front of you right now. Oh, it's thank amazing. you so much. And my question was, um, you already talked about the difference between voicing in a video game and um, a television series. So I was just curious, when you returned um, as Batman in the Orkham series, were you trying to replicate exactly how you were Batman in the animated series, or were you trying a slight new spin on it? Slightly what? A slight new spin, like a new type of version of it. People ask me a lot how the voice has evolved over 24 years, and the answer really is that's not the objective. The objective is to be consistent. The, the trick is to keep it fresh and to keep it real because that sound, when people heard that um, as kids, you could sort of register a part of the brain and they can tell in a second if you're lying or if you're faking it. So for me, the trick has been keeping it real and keeping it fresh and keeping it alive, especially doing the games. Mm -hmm. But you also evolve as a person. You is evolve, the thing, yeah. You know? yeah. And you bring more emotion, um, more emotion to it. But you really want to stay stay true to that that tone that you hit. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the shirt. I know I'll be coming to a Batman panel. Oh. I'm wearing Marvel, but um, <laughs> really. Um, if they did a theatrical animated Batman film featuring every, bat, every Batman that's been on screen and, t and television and movie, which, and it was all animated, would you do it? Oh, God, yeah. Wouldn't that be a blast? Yeah. That would be hysterical. <laughs> that would that be great. Right. All the way through. All you, the all Batman. The way, all the way to recent. Except, except, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to say his name. Don't. Uh -oh. I'm not going to say his name. Except no. him. No, don't, don't, say don't be mean. No. I'm not going to say don't it now. Be I'm, keeping it, I'm keeping my mouth shut on his But name. no, like Legends of the Dark Knight, if they had did that Ooh. story and did all different actors yeah, doing the different be, versions. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool? really cool. Yeah, that'd be really that'd cool. Be cool. Who, would, who would you guys fight? Who, every, every, every version of Joker. Oh, Joker. There yeah, there all you go. All the Jokers. There you go. I still am holding out for one more Batman Beyond animated yeah. film. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. I would love to do one more. I really would. That would be great. Yeah. Or a Batman Beyond game. Or even the game, the Arkham game for Batman Beyond would be great, that too. That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I do, I do, whenever I play Arkham City, I do use the alternate costume of Batman Beyond. Of <laughs> the shirt, just says, quote, uh, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Everybody before me has been asking such good questions, and here I am about to ask like, the dumbest question in the world. The only I... stupid question is the one you're about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but feel no pressure. <laughs> oh, boy. Here goes nothing. What do the quintessential voices of Batman sound like if they were Christian Bale's Batman? <laughs> there would going. be lots of pauses. <laughs> pauses and laryngitis. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can die happy. <laughs> Hi, I, I really loved Epilogue and uh, Return of the Joker, and I just um, I felt like you just teased so much more, all of you guys, with the with those. I felt like there wasn't enough closure, and I really loved how um, you know you teased that Bruce uh, dated uh, Barbara behind Dick's back, and I don't know. I wanted more. Wait, what, what are Bruce, you saying? What? Bruce was dating Barbara Gordon. Was behind. dating. Oh, thank yeah. God. I heard you say that Bruce did Barbara. I didn't, I didn't that's all I heard. Well, I was we, both, wow. we both kind of went, what are you saying? Drop it. You had mentioned, wow. that, you had mentioned <laughs> that they were running out of stories, but all you did was tease more and more like things that, you know, you teased us. Like, uh, was there ever any plans, any talks to do more uh, at that time? Or? We never really are privy to the story arc no. of the shows. We no. get the scripts when they're done. Yeah, and we get, hey, you're starting on Tuesday. Congratulations, oh, yeah. you got picked up for another yeah. season. Those you're are questions for like Bruce and, yeah. and yeah. Paul and stuff. Um, they don't like to include actors in story ideas because we'd be just plugging our own roles. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's I'm, also, I'm hoping that there's a, a Batman Beyond version of the Arkham games. That's what, we, well, that's what we were just talking yeah, about. We would love to. Yeah, we would love to, yeah. That'd be awesome. Right. So if anyone's listening from Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Kevin, you mentioned uh, Bruce, Bruce uh, dating Barbara. Bruce was the ladies' man. Oh, yeah. He got a lot of, but, you know, Terry stayed 
with Dana. He prayed. Terry is not a billionaire, which helps with the women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as if that's all Bruce has going oh, on. Oh, no, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Very true. But it Ladies. helps. You know, come on. I know. Yeah, but no, yeah, Terry was, uh, Terry, you know, met Dana, and, and they, you know, were together. And I think there's also a difference between um, growing up in a family where, you know, uh, uh, Bruce grew up in a family where his parents were happily married and then taken from him. Terry grew up in a family of divorce. Mm -hmm. So I think there is definitely a difference between how you view relationships if you're from a, a, a family that's been married and a family that's divorced. And I think maybe there was something in Terry that wanted to hold, hold on to some type of relationship, one steady thing. Because the relationship with Bruce was wonderful between Bruce and Terry, but also at many times maddening, I'm sure for Terry as well. So it's, I think the Dana kind of thing was, was keeping grounded, which was interesting. It's another difference between Bruce and Terry because Bruce yeah, never really had Terry that. Yeah, because Terry didn't have the kind of psychic no. baggage no. that Bruce had. No. They, so he would yeah. be able to have a, a healthy relationship, yeah. one steady, healthy relationship. In Bruce life. can't commit to anybody. Yeah. That's so why he's constantly dating all these different women. And horrible. You know, Just horrible. He's... <laughs> well, Terry did date 10. Terry did date 10. I just he remember. Did date I remember one time I asked Bruce Tim about that. I said, so how long did they date? What happened? And Bruce just looked at me and said, let's just put it this way. We did an episode where later she leaves and she's wearing his jacket. Ooh. Oh. And that's all he said. And I, he walked away and I was like, wow. wait, that didn't really answer my question. <laughs> Bruce was a master at that. I was like, oh, he didn't really. Yeah. So. And she was know. smoking a cigarette. And <laughs> she was exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Been fantastic inspiration. Like even since like when I was a young age and just oh, hearing you. your voices and the way you've been able to just like emote like even like not on screen or on stage, but just through your voice. And so, like my question to you then is, has there been any time, like any scene or specific line where you felt like the most emotional connection and just the loss of yourself and the more of the character? Good question. I think for me, one of the reasons my favorite Batman movie is Perchance to Dream. Oh. I mean, uh, episode, episode yeah. is Perchance to Dream. Awesome. Is because that happened during that one, um, where Batman goes into his past. And um, any time mm -hmm. Batman has to deal with the psychic wounds of his childhood, um, I really related to. So that one, and also um, um, Mask of the Phantasm, because he he goes back to his parents' grave and he's, he's, he's pleading with them to release him from this oath he made because he wants to have a normal life. Um, those, those aspects of Bruce Wayne Batman um, touched something in me from my own childhood. And so I got very emotional when I was doing those. Uh, yeah, mine was different. Mine was really, it's strange when I watch myself doing any animated character I usually still see myself. I don't know if you do that. Where it's like I can, I, I see myself through my voice. I don't know if it makes any sense, but when I watch Batman or Star Lord or whatever, I'm still there. It's still me in, in my own way. And the only time where I completely and totally forgot about that was the very last scene in Epilogue where Bruce is trying to get the pills open and he can't get the pills open. And it's, there's this moment where Terry realizes if I walk away now, he's gone and I'm gone. I have to stay and I have to be with him forever. And I had that moment where it was, he says, uh, you know, are you going to be around? And he says, yeah, I'm going to be around. Don't worry, I'm going to take care of it. And it was that moment of, I got this. And it was the first time I'd ever watched an episode where I didn't see myself at all. I just saw the characters. It was really cool. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do you want to do? Ren, a few more questions? Or what? Yeah. Hey, okay. right, well, first I just want to say this is pretty awesome just being in front of you guys. But uh, my first... Uh, in, introduction to Batman was actually Batman Beyond when I was really little. Okay. And ever since then, Batman became like a giant part of my life. So like, just wondering, do you think that there would ever be a Batman Beyond live action movie produced? They talked about it for years. Did they? They, re they did, they talked about it. And there was, it was the one, especially for a couple years around Hollywood, it was the 
topic of, hey, did you hear Keanu Reeves is playing it? And, oh, and that's go, right. And you go, Keanu Reeves, it's Batman's by 70. Keanu Reeves is 58 years old. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who were they talking about? So there was always that. There was always that kind of talk. I remember that. And remember it, that. I'm sure it will. Ha and then there was talks when the when the Christian Bale series ended, where you see Robin standing up in the Batcave, uh, and the bats are flying. Or there was talk then. Oh, they're going to take him into the Batman Beyond world. So there's always kind of talks about it. My guess is, with the way Hollywood works, it'll come around at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Sure. So um, it's really cool to be like um, up here and sorry. <laughs> and, there you go. Um, what like I was gonna ask is like um, my f f well before I saw the animated series, before like I saw the animated series, I always thought Michael Keaton was like the best version of Batman ever. And uh, I was wondering, did you ever feel like you had to like fill? Like his shoes. Like, do you ever feel like you had to be as good as, like Michael Keaton? I, I, I actually hadn't seen Michael Keaton's version, so I wasn't influenced by it before yeah. I did the show. You were the one guy who didn't see. I was the one see. guy who didn't see it. <laughs> Believe it or not. That's amazing. One of the most iconic Batman is the guy I going. Know. I never saw it. No, I saw it afterward. <laughs> after after I got the role. But um, no, I was really winging it in there. Um, no pun when intended. When I was coming up with the. Uh, when I was coming up with the, uh, the way to do the character, I, I kind of learned on the job. I didn't have the background that you all have, really, in the anthology of Batman. Uh, but I, you know, I'm a quick learner. So, ladies and gentlemen, the voices of Batman, Kevin Conroy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a fun convention. <laughs>